identifying all your options, you can look up one of my papers on serial synthesis using FACT, um, and it, in the appendix, gives you, for every freedom space, every intermediate freedom space, DOF and type that lies within it. So again, if you go to that paper, um, which all my papers are on my um, publications on my website, Flexible, uh, you know, the, the Flexible Research Group website, um, you, you see the one that deals with serial systems, you can look that up, and there's, there's a chart at the back of that paper, and, and it, if you look up any freedom system, so if you look up 4D of type uh, 8, it will, it will associate with that, say, okay, 3 do of type 4, 5, 2 do of type 1 through 9, and 1 do of type 1 through 3. And it'll do that for any, for any freedom space you pick, whether it's in the parallel pyramid or not. It will tell you all the intermediate freedom spaces um, that, uh, you know, that, um, that lie within it. Okay? So, so you, you, you can either, you don't need to be smart, you can just look that up and I'll tell you all, all your options. Um, you know, but, but you do need to be smart enough to know how they're oriented and located within that freedom space, right? But, or you can just already be smart off the bat. And most of you that took, took my class here at this point are going to be familiar enough with these shapes that you'll be able to identify which ones lie within them. And remember, you don't have to identify them all unless you want to consider all your options, okay? But these are all your options, okay? So again, ha your options have to lie in the parallel pyramid, okay? They have to be inside this space, and therefore they have to be the left of it. Okay, great. And then the number of one, uh, ones you pick, intermediate freedom space, is going to determine the number of parallel modules you're going to synthesize. Um, very rarely do you want more than two. So if you can do two, you should do two. And in this case, we really want just two because we want to keep it as simple as possible. The less stages you have bobbing around, the better. So we're just going to pick two of them. You can pick any of these two, um, but remember, you also want to make sure that the two you pick have the right number of degrees of freedom in them um, that they, they not only add up to be this space, but, but they, they, they will equal the number of degrees of freedom in this. So, so for instance, you could pick, um, if you picked one of these, there's three degrees of freedom in it. And so then you wouldn't want to pick one of these because these have two degrees of freedom. So it's three plus two is five. It'll be under constrained because you want this to be four. Okay, so if you pick one from this column, you better pick one from this column. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, if you pick one from this column, you better pick um, 2 from this column. So 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 2, but that would require three stages, you know, three parallel modules. So you can pick one from this column and one from this column to get 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, so you can kind of see how that works right off the bat so you can make sure you don't under-constrain the stage. Okay, and, and you might ask yourself, um, do we want to under constrain this stage? Well, it's like, no, we don't care about range in this. We, we just want to accommodate the deformation so the stage doesn't jam in the hex nut, right? So we don't care about range, but we very much care about dynamics because there's a motor attached to this that's spinning at, you know, who knows how many RPM, and we don't want uh, masses to be vibrating. So it's important to this application that we do not under constrain it, okay? Okay, and you can pick any of these. You can even pick the same one, oriented the same way or a different way. You just don't want to pick the exact same one on top of itself, right? You know, and so, so let's pick um, this one. By, by the way, um, just, just as a side note, you can, you can synthesize um, serial systems that have freedom spaces inside the parallel pyramid too, right? You could just pick, if you say you wanted this freedom space, you want it to be, well, we already did that. We, we, you know, we did the disk, which lies within the parallel pyramid, and we, we said, let's synthesize a serial version, and what we did is we found these two intermediate freedom spaces inside there, right? So just because it's in the parallel pyramid doesn't mean you have to synthesize a parallel system. You can synthesize serial system, you know, serial systems and hybrid systems can achieve all freedom spaces in the fact library. It's parallel systems that can only achieve the ones in the parallel pyramid, okay? But you're not going to get a parallel system that, that achieves this one, okay? So, so what we're going to do for this example is, again, we're, we know this is one of our options. It's a, and that's the other thing. Why would you pick super complicated options? Like, you know, these are pretty messy. Like, if you've got a nice, beautiful, simple one, I'd strongly recommend you pick it. Because, you know, the simpler the design, the cleaner, the better. 
Okay, the, the better it's going to be. Only pick complicated ones if you have to because there's no other way. So if, if these are all your options in red, you know, I, I would recommend, you know, this one, this one, this one, this one, maybe this one, and, and that's about it, you know, um, you know maybe uh, some of the other ones. But um, so we're going to go with this one. And um, that's one of the intermediate spaces. And, and I'll show you how it lies within the freedom space. So here's the freedom space without the screws, right? And, you know, let's pick that one. So you can see that's where it, how it lied within. And we can move the, the translation anywhere we want. So this lie within there. Okay, great. Okay, so now what's the other one we should pick? Well, we could pick another clean one. Remember, we, we, since we picked it from this, this column, it has two degrees of freedom, we should probably pick another one from this column if we want only a second stage um, or a second parallel module and we want two plus two to equal four. So, you know, we, we, we should pick one of these. And, you know, this one was so clean and simple. Why don't you just pick the same one and orient it differently? Right? So we could pick this one. Okay? So you can see how these two, they're the same, but they're oriented differently. They, they share the same, you know, this dotted line, this dotted line, this dotted line are on top of each other, of course, just drawing them separate. Um, but, but it is true that this and this both lie within there. And I hope you can see it's true that this plus this would sum to this. You know, all the lines added together would make the disks, and these two added together would make this disk. Okay, and we've only picked two, and so you know it's, it's going to be two stages. And guess what? Two plus two equals four. So right off the bat, you know it's not going to be under constraint. So this is, this is how you know from your finite options of designing this to be serial, you can know that um, this is, this is going to be a good one that generates a clean design, most likely, right? But you'd have to go through all your options to consider them, you know. Um, and, and, but but it's, a, it's a great design approach because there's only finite options and it's going to take you down all the paths pretty quickly and you'll be able to consider all the designs and know you found the best one. So if you're getting hired as a consultant, you should definitely go down all the paths and, and consider all the parallel designs and then which none of which exi work for this and then and then consider all the serial designs and uh, and and check that and then then I do recommend doing all the hybrid designs but I haven't taught you that yet okay and then and then you know you've considered them all and and you can give the person that hired you the best design and, and they can have confidence knowing they couldn't hire anyone else to get anything better okay so so um Okay, so, so, so we've got our two intermediate freedom spaces. They're looking good. We know already, what it, we don't even know what the design looks like, but we know it's not going to be under constraint. So let's start uh, thinking this. Here's the structural tube. Okay, here's going to be the piece that sticks on, you know, the carriage rides on the outside of it. And, and we're going to stick that on. Okay, that's going to be like the ground. Um, here's the hex nut uh, state. You know, we're going to make a, a stage that kind of clamps on the hex nut. You could put a bolt there to clamp on the hex nut. And then... You know, so, so we know there's going to be two parallel modules, which means there's going to be a ground right here, a stage right here, and then an intermediate body. And when we're confined to the constraints of this structural tube, you know, we, we don't have a whole lot of space. So we're just going to like kind of make a blob in there that fits and, and see what happens, okay? Okay, so we're going to, con here's the ground, so we put the hatch hatching on there. And we know the final thing, we know the stage needs to move with these four degrees of freedom. That's what we wanted, which is the grand freedom space I showed you before. And we know we've, we've split it up into, into this one. You know, just those two make this one. That's one intermediate freedom space. And then there's the other intermediate freedom space, right? That's the same thing but oriented differently. So, so now we're going to look up this guy's constraint space, which is this. Okay, it's the plane of blue lines, you know, and the box. Okay, just right there, so th this, this plane is coplanar to that, and the box, the, all these guys point in directions that are parallel to the red ones. Okay, so we'll put the constraint space on top, and now we can go do all the sub-constraint spaces. Remember, this space has five sub-constraint spaces. We can go through, find all the ways to make them exactly constrained. Now, the question is, is it important that this be exactly constrained? Well. Maybe, you know, if you exactly constrain it, it'll be more precise. Um, you know, there's not going to be nonlinearities. There's not going to be any bifurcation. There, you know, it's, it's going to be, maybe you'll get better chatter on, you know, maybe you'll get less issues um, with, with, you know, with, with your system here. But um, 
but at the same time, it's very difficult to come up with an, an, ex an exactly constrained design that's symmetric and easy to fabricate. So what I did was I, I tried, like, look, let's just, let's just make it symmetric and easy to fabricate. So I, I decided to over-constrain um, this, this, uh, this parallel module. Okay? So what I did is I picked, you know, basically two wires from the box, well, actually four, one on this side, one on that side, one on that side, one on that side. And then I picked um, two blades from the plane, this, this plane, right? So, so here it is. There's the two blades from the plane and two wires from the box. Okay, that's, that's over-constrained pretty substantially, actually, because you, you really just want uh, four non-redundant constraints. There's three from there, three from there, and one from each of there. So that, that's over-constrained by quite a bit. But, it, but it's nice and symmetric, and it achieves the motion you'd want, okay? Okay, and, and you can always like go back and make it more exactly constrained um, while keeping it as symmetric as you can. Um, you know, like for instance, why have four wires? Why don't you have two on both sides like that? Well, it's because of fabrication, I'll show you. But um, that would be less over constraint. So if over constraint's an issue, you can always back it down um, if, if, if it's, it becomes critical. Okay, but, but anyway, just go with me here. I over constrained it. And then, uh, and then let's take these two degrees of freedom, which has this intermediate freedom space, right? And um, let's, let's synthesize the other parallel module, okay, that joins that, that ground to that intermediate body, okay? Okay, and so, so what you do is you, 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 you now, you know, we just use the other intermediate constraint space to, synth to join this stage to the intermediate body. Now we're going to join the intermediate body to the ground with this, this freedom space, this constraint space, which is the same thing. You just orient it and locate it differently. And again, we're, we're going to over-constrain it to make it symmetric, but hopefully keep it as low over-constrained as possible. So we're going to pick four wires from the box, which is already over-constraining it, by one. And then we're going to pick one blade from the plane right in the middle. Okay? But you can see it's at least symmetric. Okay? Um, and so this is, this, you know, technically you just need the, the blade and one wire, but that wouldn't be very symmetric. Okay? Um, right. And so, so, but anyway... Okay, so with that design, we should be able to get, you know, two of these degrees of freedom from one of them and two degrees of freedom from the other one and inherit all the others, okay? And, and uh, the nice thing about this design is it can be made on a water jet with three different uh, parts. You know, the two of them are identical and the other one in the middle is thicker and slightly different, you can see. Um, but, you know, you make these uh, two unique parts, really three parts, right, anyway. Um, and, and you can then assemble them together, uh, put bolts in them, and, and uh, so this is why I made this because I just had a water jet and some aluminum, and so I needed to make it out of planar pieces that could be assembled, and so that's how I assembled it. And sure enough, uh, you know, it, it actually looks like a dancing man, right? And, and it, <laughs> so we made it. We, you know, he's even got eyes with the bolt holes here, and you can see it. Uh, he can jump up and down with the degree of freedom we wanted. Okay, he can rotate uh, about the degree of freedom he wanted, and then he can shear, you know, do the shimmy over to the left, or to the right and the left um, uh, with that translation, and then he can do this uh, twist uh, rotation. N not a, not a, twi a twist with a pitch of zero, but I, I meant the dance, the twist, right? So, so he's doing that. Um, and, and then all the other directions that we didn't want are heavily constrained. Now, so what we ended up doing is we built this thing and uh, put it in everyone's lathe, and, and it fixed, it magically fixed all the problems. And the over-constraint within the flexures wasn't that big an issue, okay? Again, we could improve it maybe even further by reducing the over-constraint in it, but it was worth it for symmetry's sake, it was worth it for parasitic error's sake, it was worth it for um, stiffness' sake, and it, it was worth it for um, fabrication's sake was the main one. Um, but. Uh, uh, you know, whereas before when all the students would, would, would drive their carriage, it would stick and slip and backslash and all kinds of problems and jam um, and, and cut with bad chatter. When they put this in and interface their hex nut, um, which would go right through here, and they put the bolt there, um, you know, and then attach the carriage on top there, uh, all the problems magically disappeared and it cut like butter. So you can see how this can work and that's a serial system. Okay, so the final topic is, is just practice but again I'm not going to do slides on that. This, this is something we can do in office hours um, and, and I'll, I'll do a bunch of examples on the YouTube channel and everything. So 
um, eventually, you know, once I get to, to it. Um, but um, uh, anyway, so that concludes uh, serial synthesis. Hopefully you now know how to design um, both parallel and serial things and not only consider whether a design is over constrained or exactly constrained, or, but also now whether a serial design is in addition to either being over or exactly constrained, whether it is under constrained or not under constrained, okay? Uh, so thank you for listening. That completes this lecture.